Hey everyone. Today I want to talk about something really important that, as far as I know, pretty much universally affects artists. It's that every painting, or other kind of artwork, has an ugly stage. I think I've mentioned this in my videos before, but in case you missed it, every painting has an ugly stage. <laughs> At least in my experience. Basically what that means is, as you work on a piece of artwork, things start all nice and hopeful, you have a solid idea you're excited about, and as you lay down those first lines or colors, the excitement continues because art is so fun! That sounded more sarcastic than I intended it to. And then you work on it and work on it and you're making various color or line decisions and things are just not looking good at all. You're staring at this thing as you're creating it and, well, the ugly stage can be mild where you're thinking, hmm, I don't really like that. I should fix it. Or it can be very severe, where you step back and just viscerally hate the piece. And it can be anywhere in between those two extremes. I know, because I've been there all along that spectrum. And the reason I wanted to talk about this on this video in particular is because the ugly stage on this painting was one of those where I step back and viscerally hate the piece. About halfway through, I hated it so bad. I was really disliking the colors, and I started to feel like every color decision I had made along the way was just wrong. I thought the mountains looked lame, they didn't match with the rest of the piece, that I'd never be able to get that cloak as deep of a blue as I wanted it to be, and that her two different colored eyes were just too different to ever look good. Ever. It was so bad, I started fantasizing about scrapping the whole piece, completely painting over the background, or something drastic to fix it. This isn't the first time I've encountered such a dramatic ugly stage either. The other two paintings I did, the one right before and the one right after this, both had mild ugly stages. They weren't bad at all. Not so much to wrap my head around. But this painting was making me want to throw in the towel for a long time. Like literally just not even paint for months on end. Fortunately, because I've been here before, I didn't give up on her. It's really easy to quit a painting at the ugly stage if it's a really bad ugly stage. I mean, I, I suspect most of the time when artists stop working on a piece, it's usually at the ugly stage. It just reaches a point where they're like, they just can't see the potential. But as tempting as it is to just scrap a piece at this point, there's so much you can learn from the ugly stage. In fact, I think the ugly stage is where most of us learn the most about how to improve our work. I think the ugly stage is the magic part of the painting. Don't get me wrong, I hate it, and it doesn't feel magical in any way, shape, or form while I'm in the middle of it. The magic is as you push through the ugly stage, and things suddenly start to really work, and start getting so gorgeous, and that is so exciting. That's a triumph. It's a battle won, and in my experience, the art has transformed dramatically, at least in my mind. There was a painting I did like, I don't know, 10 years ago that had a, <laughs> it had a mighty powerful ugly stage. It was definitely one of those moments where I viscerally hated that painting and kind of wanted to cut the canvas right off the stretchers, but I didn't give up and as proof, I'll insert the painting right here. The ugly stage came before most of what you can currently see in this painting. It was back when I was roughing in the flames and the buildings that are engulfed in the flames. Basically, everything that's on fire. I was still just forming those shapes and it looked so bad. Truly, truly awful. It looked like a kindergartner had painted it and I was just incredibly frustrated, but I kept going. And I will say, the ugly stage is usually the most profound for me when I'm working on acrylic paintings. I don't normally struggle with it as much in any of the other mediums that I've worked in. Acrylic is like my Achilles heel. Way back when I first tried acrylic, I declared that I hated painting, and I really never wanted to paint again. And I went on to do colored pencils, markers, and pencil work, uh, and digital. So I did avoid painting for a long time, and when I did paint, it was rare, and I didn't... I don't want to say I didn't enjoy it at all, because I do, but it is a struggle. At least acrylic. I've, in this past year, really kind of got a good flow going with watercolor. It's feeling kind of natural. I'm kind of really enjoying it. And there's still struggle bus moments, like every time I am going ready to paint the skin because 
I don't know why skin stresses me out so much, but it does, because, like, if anything else in the painting doesn't come out nice and smooth, or just the way I want it to, or shade properly, I can freaking work with that. But if it's the skin? I, you, no. I... Maybe it's that I don't know how to fix it if the skin goes awry, or maybe I'm just more forgiving of the paint being splotchy and weird in other parts of the painting and not on the skin. Because the skin, I want to be... Can I say skin a few more times? Anyway, I really want the skin <laughs> to be nice and smooth. And like, I'll go back and add imperfections and stuff later, but I don't want the weird stuff that watercolor does when it's not obeying me. Anyway. <sighs> I went off on such a tangent, I forget where I was on my voiceover. So way back then, I declared I hated to paint, and yet I did keep doing it on occasion. And that's because acrylic frustrates me so much, and yet I also love the results of it after I struggle my way through it. I don't think I had a single acrylic painting with a mild, ugly stage. They've all been whoppers. Awful. And I feel like there's a few that never made it out of the ugly stage, if I'm being completely honest. But with watercolor, it's it's been so much better with a few exceptions. This painting is very much one of them. So about the point where her cloak is looking really baby blue, I hate this painting. I'm worried I can't get the cloak to a deep, almost navy blue, because watercolor paper does kind of have this point where it just doesn't quite want to take any more pigment. And at that point, I was still worried that her facial expression was going to turn out ridiculous, and I did end up changing it to try to correct it. And I'm hating the background. I'm worried the red of her top isn't deep enough, and won't go deep enough, like the cloak, and I'm worried her hair just plain looks stupid. But I keep going. I actually snapped some photos and sent them to a trusted and impartial eye, who would give me honest feedback, and that could help me fix things I wasn't, perhaps, seeing clearly, and maybe stop worrying about things that were fine. And I kept working at those colors. And... I like her. Now, there's an issue with this painting that goes back to the sketch, and that issue does still bother me, but other than that, I'm quite happy with it. I do like how the colors turned out. I like her presence. I, I just think it could have been framed better on the paper, and that had absolutely nothing to do with the ugly stage. That was all back in the sketch phase. I should have fixed it before I inked it. I don't know why I didn't. I think I was just being lazy, if I'm being honest. I wasn't sure how to change it to frame it better, and I was definitely a bit stressed out that day. So, you know, I think I just pushed it through with a bad framing from the, from the start. So, have you encountered the dreaded ugly stage? What was your experience with it? I think it both challenges and rewards us as artists. It's the struggle that makes things worthwhile in the end, right? <laughs> so, like I said, I struggle bust the colors on this one for a while. I originally painted the background in mostly pale purples, and I don't think I originally had envisioned it being quite that purple. I think I wanted it to be mostly gray with a hint of purple, but as usual, I went overboard. So at one point, I went back and grayed out the sky part a little more because I had it in my head that once I pulled out the white for the highlighting, I wanted to add some white to the sky um, as clouds. But when I finally get to that part of the painting, I've been so frustrated with the background for so long. I went over a lot more of it with the white than I originally planned. I was trying to make the whole background more misty so that she would stand out a bit more from it. And I think that was successful, but then again, I'm not sure if I made it misty enough. And the hair was originally supposed to be white, but I kept feeling like it needed more depth. It was just looking too flat to me. So I shaded it darker and darker, and now it's basically gray. I also had this moment, which I believe at this point in the video has already long since passed. But I suddenly realized I hadn't painted the skin between the strands of her choker. And I had just the tiniest bit of skin tone left on my palette. So I did my best to stretch it and get all that painted. Fortunately, that area ended up with several more layers of paint on top of that, since it is one of the darker areas of the painting. Another thing I do in my paintings is I almost always draw the eyes wider than I actually intend them to be. This is because it enables me to tweak the eyes at the last minute when I'm adding the eyeliner and eyelashes. Because when I paint in the eyeliner, it's usually very, very dark. I can go over part of the eyeball to adjust the look in the eyes. So that way I can slightly adjust the facial expression by how low the eyelid falls and how much of the iris the eyelid covers. The more wide open the eye, the more shocked or angered the character will look, and the more closed it is can make them look relaxed, fearful, or snide, or any number of things once coupled with different eyebrow and mouth shapes. So my eyes tend to look comical when I first start to paint them, at least 
I think so. And it isn't until later in the painting they start to look a little more realistic. And not that I'm going for actual realism. As I get into highlighting, the hair transforms a good bit because there's a lot of wispy bits that I don't add until I'm working with the white ink. That step is where I really started to like this painting. As I work with the white and I'm trying to give the crow some details, I was struggling with the beak a little bit and I had to repeatedly go over the white line with a darker color to kind of erase it so I could try again. But he did finally get it to look okay. And I did that by not drawing as much of it. I was going too far. I need to learn to pull back. So all in all, I don't think this is the best painting I've ever done, but she's all right. Not what I originally envisioned, but that totally happens sometimes. Maybe most of the time. I picture one thing and by the time I've sketched it and inked it and painted it, it's usually very different from that very first flash I saw in my mind. Like I think the very, very, very first inkling of this painting I had, it was dark out and she was lit by like a lantern she was carrying. Almost like the hermit card from tarot decks. But then it ended up like this because I wanted a misty mountain background and I'm still not sure if I regret that particular decision. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.